do this to make the right man chase you. Hey, I'm Antje Boyd, founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And of course, welcome back. Today, we're talking with Gay and Katie Hendricks. Hey, you guys. Hey. Hi, Antje. <laughs> so excited to have you guys here. And ladies, for those of you who don't know who this incredible couple is, they traveled the globe, they've appeared on Oprah, they've written 40 books, 40 years married. I mean, just absolutely a wealth of information. So, so excited to have you guys here. Thank you. Thank you. Always happy to talk about these subjects. The world actually does need more love and uh, anything we can do to advance that cause, we're happy to do it. Yeah. And you know what? Like some of the women that come to you, they say they want a sort of power couple relationship, that life that you guys live, right? Like you train yeah. together, coach together, travel together and make the world a better place. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's one of the, the most interesting things that somebody can do with their life right now is to work with their partner and uh, have that uh, experience of both collaborating mm -hmm. to, uh, toward a purpose that each of us are really wanting. And we definitely want to bring more love into the world. Yeah, we were the first couple um, <laughs> when we were invited on Oprah way back when our book Conscious Loving came out. Uh, we insisted on doing it as a couple because they only wanted you one know, of us. They only wanted one of us. Like, we said, Wait a minute, right. This is a relationship. They wanted book. to know who's the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we said, nope, um, I'm not going to do it. She's not going to do it, but we'll be happy to do it. And so they said, okay. And uh, so uh, the rest is history. I just like love that. So, so the women that usually watch this right they're like usually more the alpha females right they're like in control usually that come from more traumatic backgrounds narcissistic yeah. abuse emotional unavailability yeah. and so what can this woman do to attract a man like you okay <laughs> you know what I mean? well thank you well, like actually, i mean their, their a... version of it right <laughs> yeah uh, well we actually have a program called attracting genuine love and it keys off of several principles and I'll tell you, we can share what they are. Yeah. Number one has to do with commitment. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have to really get clear that this is something you want to do. And like, for example, I just had a memory of a woman who was 56 that I worked with in this very office where we were helping her manifest her man. And she was a multimillionaire. She's a very powerhouse person, very respected in the corporate world but just hadn't been able to make it work. And one of the things we've got to do when you're single and want to really have somebody in your life is you've got to kind of let go of whatever has happened in the past mm -hmm. and make a living present right now commitment to creating the ideal man for yourself. Um, and that's so important because to get anything working in the material world, you have to have what we call a whole body yes, or a whole body no, but you have to get underneath your mind and use your body, your breathing, your movement. And that's where most people fall short because it's one thing to manifest something from this little piece of the mind that's only about the size of a 25 cent piece or a 50, 50 cent piece. And, but it's different if you've got your whole body, your emotions, your energy system. And so one of the things I just wanna put out is that think of everything I say in the context of something you need to experience in your mm -hmm. body down here, mm -hmm. as well as up here. So commitment, getting clear, this is what you want, getting clear. And then the second step is doing what we call creating a whole body absolute yes and a whole body absolute no we say three mm -hmm. absolute yeses and three absolute no's of what you want to create in your relationship i was just thinking of that too it's kind of like the goal post so we're you know in uh, a lot of people are watching football right now and if you're wanting to aim toward the goal post your absolute yeses and your absolute no's really are the framework for moving toward what you want and they also can give you a very clear checklist for when you're first meeting someone. So like one of my absolute no's is someone who is mean to children or animals. That's an absolute no. Another absolute no was someone who's actively in an addiction. 
And for me also, the, just the general uh, in a, a rigidity of spirit, you know, someone who has, you know, is kind of tightly wound, that's an absolute no. Whereas an absolute yes, which you met, of course, all my absolute yeses, which I didn't even know what they were at the time, which was when Gay opened his mouth, I thought, this is the smartest person that I've ever met and the funniest. So right there, he met two of mine, uh, someone who's really smart and someone who's very funny. And I could see right away that you were occupying yourself and were focused on your creativity. Mm -hmm. And I was so passionate about my own creativity that an absolute yes for me is someone who's engaged in life from purpose and their own passion. And so those are some examples of absolute yeses and nos. It's actually, I set up my absolute yeses and nos and figured that out one month before I met Katie. So I think it was highly instrumental. I set up my goalposts. I said, okay, I want somebody who's really committed to their creativity um, because I'm committed to mine and I don't want to hassle about that. You know, if I go in a room and write for two or three hours, I don't want the person out there pouting because I'm not spending. You know? <laughs> and so I want somebody who's independent and really committed to their creativity. Mm -hmm. And I wanted somebody who was honest in their speaking and, um, you know, didn't play games around that. And also was willing to take responsibility for things rather than blame and criticism all the time. So there the, the, was sort of a combination of yeses and nos, but I, one of my nos was I didn't want anybody practicing an active addiction because I'd gotten into trouble a couple of times with um, getting into a, a relationship with a woman who had a, you know, a love affair with something like either cigarettes or Valium or alcohol. And uh, I didn't want to go through that drama again of sort of trying to help a person kick an addiction. So I said, okay, no addicts, uh, no blamers. <laughs> <laughs> and no whiners. No whiners. <laughs> and so, um, but particularly had to do with the honesty mm -hmm. and being willing to take responsibility rather than play the blame game all the time. And so, um, a month later, there we are, you know, mm -hmm. and I had the opportunity to meet in living reality somebody who had that potential. <laughs> and fortunately, I managed to put on my psycho-spiritual high beams and convince her to spend the rest of my, her life with me. Yeah, we have, a, a, you know, at, at one of our books, we talk about our meeting story, which is also just a really wonderful uh, story. But the the whole at the, at the heart of that is, are you willing to be yourself? Are you willing to have yourself appreciated? And so at the root of that is any, any place in you that you feel unlovable, that needs your attention. What, what is really needed here in order to wake up to your fundamental lovability, because otherwise you're always going to be looking for clues to, from the other person that you're lovable. And that sets up a, a jangle that's very difficult to really flourish in. Absolutely. And this is like really sort of like what you, it's what we're referring to also like the self-confidence through others, which of course is highly dangerous because you enter now codependent territory right yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so what's the next one? Oh, well to keep a rich supply of benign approval going yeah appreciation just to keep as an active force field mm -hmm. in your relationship always be looking for what's right in the person mm -hmm. uh, you know because like in relationships, there's so much tendency to talk about the negative and what hasn't been done and what you aren't doing and what we have to do. And, and what's the, not working. What's not working. Why the what's upstairs broken. toilet isn't flushing and uh, <laughs> those kind of yeah. things. But it's very unusual to actually keep a steady supply mm -hmm. of appreciation going. But, you know, to that's... me, that's part of the magic of life. Mm. You know, like right now, for example, Katie has this perfume on that I just <laughs> love and it's which I wear because he loves it mm. and I know he loves it and mm -hmm. so it's a that appreciation doesn't always have to come out your mouth it can come in like uh he really loves the way I dress and and I love 
to dress to express essence. And so that's a, another way. And Gay, he's um, touching me right now. I love, he'll come by and he'll pat me. And I just love that. And so I let him know, I really love it when you pat me. And so he will do that. And so both listening for what really lets your partner know they're appreciated. Uh, we, in our book, Conscious Loving Ever After, we have a, a, an appreciation interview that uh, you can customize your appreciation. And so even if you don't use that, give some attention to how do you most like to be appreciated? How do I most like to be appreciated? And let your partner know it so that they don't have to guess. <laughs> they don't have to read your mind. So like, I really love it. Like I love Gay's voice. So I love it when he will read me something from, uh, you know, a quote that he's heard or, or you know, a little part of an article. So I get the pleasure of his voice as well as the information. Also, this is probably a really important one every day of our lives, but if you're looking for creating a good relationship, let me take a deep breath and just <laughs> be honest with you. You need to learn to love that lonely part of yourself, that part of you that feels bad because you're not in a relationship. That doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. That's a solo inside job. And to manifest the love of your life, you need to be the love of your life first, mm -hmm. to love those parts of yourself that you find unlovable. Because a lot of times what happens is you go into a relationship wanting the other person to love the parts of mm -hmm. you that you haven't ever loved yourself. And that's a too tall task to ask of any other person. And so make that initial loving yourself an inside job and then invite somebody into your life that loves themselves mm -hmm. like that. The first uh, summer that we were together, Gay wrote Learning to Love Yourself. On, uh, and this was back before computers. So he wrote it on a legal pad with big pens. Mm -hmm. And that learning to love yourself really began then the heart of all of the other books that came after that. And it's something that we return to all the time of the value of what about this needs to be loved? What about what you're experiencing now needs to be loved? And the, and the, the clue, it's actually a very simple practice, but a profound one is to think of someone or something that you know you love. Like it could be a place that you love to go, or it could be, it doesn't have to be a person, it could be a pet that you just love and, uh, and love that person or place until you're having the experience of loving and then give it to that lonely part or the place that feels I'm never going to you know, get this relationship that I want so that you actively as a whole body experience, love yourself. So it's almost like energetic shape-shifting, right? Because it's easy to project love, project mm -hmm. love, you know, onto the most lovable thing, but then can we actually bring that back to ourselves? Yeah. That's really important because the universe is a place of equals. We are all equal beings in relationship to each other. And in that level of reality, nobody's a victim or a villain. We're all just equals interacting with each other. And any moment you step out of that sense of equality with the whole universe and with other people, life becomes miserable very quickly because life from the victim position requires other people, other, to, other people to perpetrate. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's the game. And so we invite people to step fully out of that and empower themselves and start opening up what you really want. What are your whole body yeses? And what are your whole body knows that you really don't want to create anymore in your life? So um, that's uh, fortunately, the human power of manifestation is such that if you work it right, you really can. We've seen thousands of examples of pe people who manifest the love of their lives and also many people who were troubled in couple relationships that invented themselves out of it using these tools that we're talking about. Conscious loving has been a steady bestseller now for 30 years for a good reason, because it teaches some very basic stuff that everybody needs to know. 
I think we could teach it to people in the first or second grade, but for some reason they make us learn till we're way out of college and in a relationship to actually learn we've something. Already, we already made a whole bunch of mistakes. <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. Absolutely. So I know we have time for one more before you guys have to go. So what's what would you say is like the the last well, I, one? I would say the whole idea of what do I want to contribute into the world focusing on your creativity. What really lights me up? What do I love to do? It's what Gay calls your genius. That if I'm focusing on giving my attention to the fulfillment of living in my own creativity, not only is that incredibly attractive, but it, it really empowers you, uh, the woman, to know I am a complete whole person, regardless of whether I'm in a relationship or not. And I'm getting the nourishment of creativity and interacting in the world, um, contributing my gifts, but also receiving appreciation and co-creation with more people than just one. And so I can be a, a fountain of creativity that I can bring in another whole person. And then we have two fountains who are, you know, creating like, you know, Bellagio in Las Vegas, we've got all of these different things going on that come out of the potential of people who feel whole. It's really different. If I'm feeling not good enough, I'm actually not even going to be in my full breath and in my full open posture, you know, I'll be more in, well, if there's room for me, maybe I can get something someday. I know. So you're literally moving from victim into your own sense of true power uh, as an equal who can make things happen in the world. And uh, women do that all the time, but it's usually behind the scenes. So stepping forward and making your contribution um, as an equal player in the world, I think is really a key to attracting somebody who can appreciate that and support that in you. And how do men perceive that? Because I always like to, you know, ask the other part, right? Like, so then what is this impact of the man? So why is it worth for a woman to be like, okay, you know, maybe I'm going to try this new hobby. Maybe I'm getting out of my nine yeah. to five, go, 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 right? Predictable, structured behavior. Yes, well, I think that determines your quality as a man and a human being. Are you going to define yourself as a man through fear of women and then attempt to control them? That's very popular, but it's going out of fashion big time, yeah. fast. fast. And I'm glad. Um, or are you going to define your life through tuning in and finding out what you're scared of mm -hmm. and then finding out what women are scared of and finding mm -hmm. out what we want to create together. And to me, that's the definition of a real man is somebody who's willing to open up fully to the energy of the feminine in addition to owning the full reality of their masculine. But to me, there are no strong men who are operating out of that fear of women's power. Strong men are people who salute it and bow to it and say, I'm blown away by it. And uh, to me, that's the attitude that allows me to flourish fully as a man. Oh, beautiful. I love it. So I know we're at the end. So what's like this one, a number one thing that, that you wanted to leave the women with? If they're like, you know, because they're really like, I really want this. I don't know how to get out of my own way. Like, what's just the one little nugget that you would tell them? So I would say when you, when you expand, you're going to get scared. And just take a moment to love yourself for feeling scared. Let yourself move with that fear and turn that fear into what's my next action step to move toward what I really want. Because you are going to get scared. And just acknowledge the scare. <sighs> Let yourself move with it and keep recommitting to what you really want. Beautiful. So I know we're going to post a lot of different links, ladies. I know you want to hear more about those guys. So hendrix.com is one. So we're going to post that link below. And then what was the other one about the conscious? A foundation for Conscious Living. 
Foundations for Conscious Living. Yes, which has lots of free videos, especially assisting you to turn fear into presence. So if fear is has been an obstacle, you'll find lots of resources for that. You're speaking to the women's hearts, Katie. You don't even know. <laughs> so ladies, <laughs> grab that right below. It's in the show notes as well. Well, you guys, it's been such a pleasure. I mean, I'll have to rewatch that a couple of times and it's just so incredible to have you guys here. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been our pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks, Antia. All right. You're so welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.